Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Clark and I am with NOAA Central Library. We are very excited to host today's presentation, StockSmart, NOAA Fisheries Stock Status, Management, Assessment and Resource Trends Web Tool. This presentation is part of the series National Stock Assessment Science Seminars, which is put out by the National Stock Assessment Program. And three members of the program will be speaking with you today, Jeff Weiser, Abby Furnish, and Kristen Blackheart. But before I turn this over to Abby, here are a few logistical tips to help you enjoy this presentation. If you're having trouble with the audio or the visual components of the GoToWebinar, please try logging out and then logging back into the webinar. Usually this will resolve any issues, but if you're still experiencing problems, let me know by sending me a message through the question box, which should be on your right, or email me at library.seminars, plural, at noaa.gov. We'll also be accepting questions throughout the webinar, which the speakers will address at the end of the presentation. Please feel free to type your questions into the questions box at any time throughout the presentation. Also, this presentation is being recorded and will be available on the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel, as well as the Library Seminars, um, seminars website no later than tomorrow. So with that, I thank you for attending this library seminar and I'm going to turn the presentation over to Abby Furnish. All right, thank you, Lisa. So yeah, we are here today to show you a tool that we've developed within our program. It went live last month and we're just kind of rolling it out and showing it off to people. Our presentation today will primarily be an actual demonstration within the tool itself. But before we get to that, I'll give a few slides of introduction of how we got here. So our first is kind of a Stock Assessment 101 very briefly, because I know we have a varied audience. Uh, NOAA Fisheries performs stock assessments as required by our rules in Magnus and Stevens. We like to call these a process and a product. They produce information on the current status as well as projections about a population or stock, and they are used to set management targets and thresholds, uh, frequently referred to as annual catch limits in our system. This ensures the sustainability by setting catch targets at levels that are sustainable for the population and are based on the best scientific information available. This is kind of a frequent infographic we use to show the process from all the data collection through the modeling, the results that come out of the models. We present those to peer review and our partners in the Fishery Management Council who uses that information to eventually make management decisions. The Stock Smart kind of focuses in where I have this little green circle, uh, looks at some of the results that come out of the models in the stock assessments. Uh, so that's something to highlight that this is not all the raw data that goes in, but rather the results of the models themselves, as well as kind of giving some synthesized information from the assessment reports. So stock assessment reports are currently public. They're you frequently available on council websites or science center websites, but they are usually very long detailed documents with a lot of information in them and sometimes the average user to download a long pdf and page through it, it it's a little bit difficult to sometimes find the information they're looking for so by using stock smart we have kind of a little bit of the synthesized um, details that we pull out of those reports as well um, also i just kind of have a little note there at the bottom that you know we manage close to 500 um, stocks within federal waters in the u.s we don't perform stock assessments on every stock every year we do perform though roughly about 200 a year so some some stocks are assessed every year some stocks are assessed every few years and there are a few stocks that have not been assessed yet so a little bit of where we're coming from in 2005, the Office of, 2000, uh, Office of Science and Technology has worked with the network of our Science Center staff to collect, review, and store the results of these stock assessments in a centralized database, which we call the Species Information System, or SIS. Uh, to date, we have over 2,000 records in that database. Uh, the records include stock assessment metadata, like what center or region, what model, key reference points and estimates, time series of the results, records of the surveys or data that was used in the stock assessment, uh, which are stored there. Um, we use a lot of this information in headquarters to do um, kind of for different reporting requirements that we have. 
there I have listed a few, you know, performance metrics such as our fish stock sustainability index, some reports that we deliver such as status of stocks report, as well as we often also produce quarterly reports about our stock assessment activity. So this really helps streamline our responses to a lot of internal and external data requests or questions we get about our fisheries activity. And so it's been useful for us since the creation of this database. Uh, I also want to mention that in 2010, uh, we did develop a CIS public portal that provided public access to CIS records. But essentially, kind of over time, the technological capabilities of that website declined a little bit, as well as the requests for the type of data we were producing had expanded. So essentially, we kind of a couple years ago took this process to say, let's step back and really kind of rethink how we want to be serving up the public version of the data that's in CIS. And so that's where StockSmart is coming in. It's a way to modernize the way we provided that information and to create a more dynamic interface with the public than what we were having. So briefly, just kind of our goals for the system is obviously we wanted to make our stock assessment results easier to find, access, and interpret. Uh, we did develop this to be pretty accessible um, with easy to use, kind of just a few clicks, you can get a digestible version of uh, stock assessment information. Uh, to mention the StockSmart is compatible with uh, other internet capable platforms like mobile or tablet. And we also want to mention that, you know, as CIS is also frequently being updated regularly by our centers with the most recent stock assessments, it also means that StockSmart is constantly being updated with this information. And, you know, obviously access to our data and transparency is a really important aspect of, you know, government science agencies. And we really wanted to kind of modernize and improve the way we were making that data available to the public. We also recognize we get requests for kind of bulk, large sets of data, sometimes from academic or external partners. And so we also wanted to make sure that we developed kind of queryable tools that could help download large data sets as well, if that's what's desired for people. Related to that, we wanted to provide tools that enable users to explore, visualize, interpret, and compare our assessment results. So we, we developed with pretty simple, straightforward tools that we think are still pretty powerful. The site provides a variety of um, built-in navigation tips. You'll see it in a minute. It's not super text heavy, but hopefully there's a little bit of guidance and within a few clicks, you can find the information that you're looking for. And you can use that to make comparisons. We even also provide uh, access to historical records, which is not something that's always true in all databases, but uh, you could find even older stock assessments if you wanted to compare it to newer ones as well. Uh, we also just kind of want to recognize that we wanted to reduce the amount of uh, staff time <laughs> that often gets called in for queries. It's, it's not always the most efficient system if a public member wants to go, okay, well, I need some information. I have to find who is the assessment author, or send them an email, see if they get an email back. So hopefully by having this tool, it saves um, time for both the public as well as our assessment authors themselves in just kind of facilitating that sharing of data that people are interested in. So with that, that's kind of my very quick spiel and overview. And we are going to hand it off to Jeff, who will actually sign, have be signed into our website and can provide some of the, show off the different modules and features that we have. Thank you. All right, thank you, Abby. And give me one second while I take control and hopefully everybody can see my screen right now. Uh, and yep. you should be looking awesome. So you should be looking at StockSmart. And so let me officially welcome you to StockSmart. Uh, and as Abby mentioned, this website represents a culmination of many years of work, both from our team at headquarters, as well as from uh, our contacts uh, and the scientists around the regions. Um, you know, without their efforts and their work, none of this information gets here. Uh, and this website is something that we're particularly proud of because again, um, we're really excited at the possibilities that it offers up with respect to increasing the transparency, uh, accessibility, and visibility of our scientific products related to stock assessments. Uh, so a couple quick tips or highlights or items I want to touch on before we go through. Uh, again, this website is 
entirely just an archive. Uh, and I mentioned that because I wanna make it clear that we're not doing any type of new analyses here within the website. Uh, we're simply taking the results that are reported out by the regional science centers with respect to stock assessments and then kind of parroting them here. Um, uh, again, uh, with respect to the design of this website, it's been designed to be uh, friendly and accessible to a broad suite of users. That includes NIMS staff, uh, congressional staff, academic partners, NGOs, international bodies uh, related to stock assessments, uh, as well as even the general public. Uh, so we're really trying to capture something here and make it useful for that nice broad user base and make sure there's something for everybody there. Um, and again, making sure that not only is there something there for them, but that they have the capacity to explore it and kind of pique their curiosity and see what they can find looking through this database. Um, so I'll highlight as we go through that there are built-in tips. We don't have a user manual for this database. This webinar is probably the most comprehensive demo you're gonna get. Uh, but the goal being through that design to make it really easy, straightforward, and, and not make you have to read a user manual to be able to use it. Uh, the website is 508C3 compliant for visually impaired individuals uh, and also configured for mobile device. Um, so I'll highlight just a couple more things really quick before I dive in. Um, you'll notice that the design is very modular. Uh, each of these different modules kinds of contains a specific function that we've built out. And that is very deliberate. Uh, first, because it keeps things very clean. So you're always kind of just doing one thing at a time here and you aren't overwhelmed by all of the different things this site can do. Uh, but it also enables us to very quickly slot in expansions because we absolutely plan to keep working on this website. Uh, again, this is really tailored to the requests that we get from our stakeholders. Uh, and so as new requests emerge, we want to make sure that we're able to adapt to that and to respond to that and provide that information here. Um, and one last thing I want to mention before I get started is at the bottom, there is a disclaimer section uh, that highlights just a, an important point uh, that uh, all the information here is kind of a repetition of information produced at the science centers and in stock assessment reports. Uh, if you ever notice a discrepancy, please contact us and let us know. Our email is at the bottom there. We don't expect you to find one, but just in case. Uh, but the stock assessment reports themselves should always be considered the official record as opposed to any information you find here. Um, we also provide a suggested citation if you need one. And with that, I will jump right into our first module. Uh, so for the first module we've got here is Browse by Stock. Uh, and Really, the question that this module strives to answer is what is the current condition of a stock? Uh, and that's really kind of what we've tried to tackle here. You know, what is the most recent information available on that stock? Uh, so our search function here is consistent throughout all the modules. Uh, there is the you know, regular text entry field here, but you also have some filters you can use. Uh, and I'll just explain through these once. You could do Science Center as a filter, uh, Jurisdiction or Management Council. Uh, you can also filter uh, according to fishery management plan or regional ecosystems. Uh, another feature that I want to highlight uh, is that you can use kind of the accepted common name of a stock. So I've put in summer flounder and we get that here. But you can also use a colloquial name. So fluke would be a colloquial name for summer flounder and that will still come up. Uh, you can also use the scientific name, which is Paralichthys dentatus for summer flounder. Yes, I had to look that up, <laughs> uh, but you'll see that it still comes up. Uh, the search field is pretty specific, so if you spell something wrong, it's going to let you know, and you'll have to kind of rethink your search. Uh, but uh, to get to the information you're after, you simply click on the record of the stock you're looking for, and you'll see it populate at the bottom of the page here. Uh, so when you scroll down, uh, what you'll see is this uh, table first, and what this gives you is a high-level summary of the most of the results of the most recent stock assessment for this stock. Um, in this case, you can see summer flounder was last assessed in 2019. Uh, the New England Fish or Northeast Fisheries Science Center uh, conducted that assessment. And you can see the management council, the last data year assessment type, and some general characteristics of the model. We also provide, uh, when it is available, the best biomass and fishing mortality estimate, which gives you a sense of our estimate of the current size of a stock 
as well as the current harvest rate that we are subjecting that stock to. Uh, down below that, you'll see BMSY and FMSY, and those are the maximum sustainable yield estimates for biomass and fishing mortality. So they're kind of like our optimal targets, if you will. Uh, and so you can just quickly look for this stock. You see the biomass estimate is slightly below kind of our target for optimum yield. And you can see that fishing mortality at present is a little bit below kind of what we would expect the fishing mortality rate to be at optimum yield. So the stock's a little smaller than we would expect it to be. And we're also harvesting it at a rate that's a little bit lower than we would expect. Uh, and you can find that whenever it's available for any of the stocks here. Uh, so down below, we provide time series data. We have four types of time series uh, that we will record in this database uh, when they're available. Uh, the first is catch. The second one is uh, abundance or the size of the stock. We have fishing mortality on the left down here and then recruitment on the right, which is the number of new fish added to a stock each year. Uh, so a couple features I want to highlight on this page. Uh, you can scroll over any of these points to get information about the specific data that goes in there or the specific numbers. If you wanted to save one of these images, you just click on the button and you'll save it as a JPEG or PNG image, I think. Another feature is that if you come up, you'll see that there's a drop down by assessments. And if we click on that, you'll be able to access previous assessments for summer flounder. And that's true for any of the stocks that we have here. Uh, so if I click on 2010, instantly we go to the 2010 assessment results for this stock. Uh, one last important feature that we've incorporated into this page is that each stock gets a unique species specific or I guess stock specific URL. Uh, and this is an important feature because it allows us to really link this really high level summary of the results for these stock, this stock and other stocks to other NOAA fisheries web presences tools and then external content as well. Uh, and so you can just kind of enter this URL, you could send it to a colleague, you could send it to somebody who's asking you for information and it will bring you right to this page immediately. It will always bring you to the most recent assessment information that's available, uh, which is important because as new stock assessments are conducted, uh, that information is going to be updated. So it will always keep you up to date uh, and the link will always kind of be evergreen in that sense of bringing you to the most recent information available. So a site like Fishwatch or uh, external pages like the RAN Legacy database that archives stock assessments like this uh, could find that information very quickly and, and bring it to a broader audience. So that is kind of all the features of the Browse by Stock module here. Uh, and so I encourage you to check it out. Uh, the next module that we've got is our chart time series module. And as you can probably guess, this gets a little bit more in depth with the time series you saw at the bottom of that last module. Uh, and really the main feature that we've kind of allowed people to explore in this module is that we wanted to facilitate comparisons between stock assessments as well as between stocks uh, uh, that you could do here for these time series. And that's something that really comes up often when you're doing uh, reviews of models or when stocks are highly controversial, they often will face additional scrutiny. Uh, one, way, one of the ways people can look at two different stock assessments is to look at these time series. So I will pull up an example here of Pacific Cod. Uh, and again, the search function operates largely the same way, but to select a stock, you'll click on that stock and you'll see a list of options. I will first draw just one time series because we can come down and check it out. It looks very much the same as any other. But if we come back up and add more years, we can draw the data again. You can see that now we have three years of time series or three assessments worth of time series displaying on these figures. Uh, so Pacific Cod in the Bering Sea is assessed annually. Uh, and there really aren't generally large changes between iterations of the model because the data inputs and the model themselves don't, doesn't change that much year over year. Uh, and you can see that there's really a lot of, um, you know, the trends for each year's assessment follow each other pretty well throughout all of these. Um, one thing I will note is that it looks like in this catch figure here, the time series, that you might only be looking at one data set, but you are looking at three. They just mirror each other very closely. Uh, you can click on the data series in the legend here to bring them on and off that figure at will. And that's true for any of the other time series here. So that is another function of this, um, uh, of this page. Uh, 
Another couple features I will mention, you can click on the download data function here in case you wanted to download Excel files uh, for all of the time series that you've selected using this tool. Uh, another feature that I will highlight, and I will pull up a different stock to do this. Uh, hang on a second. Let me clear the data first. Let's pull this up. Uh, so another feature I'll highlight is something that could be useful when things are a little bit different between assessments. So Bluefish uh, was assessed in 2015 and 2019. There were some changes that went into the model between these two assessments. Uh, in some cases, uh, you can see things like units changing, which can be very misleading if you're trying to look at two time series at the same time. Uh, to help people facilitate looking at different assessments or across different stocks, we've allowed or we've enabled relative time series as an alternative way of viewing uh, these data. Uh, so all this does is plot the time series relative to the maximum value on those time series. You just simply click click draw and you'll see that now we're looking at relative time series. Everything is between zero and one. And so this can allow you to kind of quickly look at trends in these data as opposed to looking at kind of the, the specific numerical values of each data point. And so that's just another way to look at these data here. You can also filter uh, if you wanted to focus on a particular set of years using this chart display years options here with your start year and end year. Uh, so that is the gist of the chart time series module. The next one we've got is the plot stock condition module. And uh, largely what this module attempts to do is reproduce what's commonly referred to as a Kobe plot. And I think the best way to explain that is to pull one up down below here and to talk about kind of what we can do with this. So if I draw these data, you'll see the figure down here. Some of you are probably pretty familiar with this. Um, this is a Kobe plot. Uh, so on the y-axis uh, going up and down, you can see F over FMSY, which uh, basically captures the current uh, rate of fishing intensity as a, uh, divided by the estimated rate at maximum sustainable yield. So if we're perfectly at maximum sustainable yield, you'll see this 1.0 line here. On the x-axis, you're doing the same thing except for biomass. Uh, and 1.0, again, would be a stock right at the biomass we estimate for maximum sustainable yield. Uh, so this figure does not show stock status, but instead it shows the risk for overfishing and overfished stock statuses. So kind of as you move into the different quadrants, the risk factors increase. So um, in this top right corner here, you would be at increasing risk of overfishing your stock because the F becomes increasingly greater uh, and, the F, uh, and the ratio of F to FMSY goes up. In the bottom left, you are, the further you go, the more risk you're, you're getting into the range of overfished. Uh, that biomass of the stock at present gets smaller and smaller and the risk of being overfished is higher and higher. Uh, in this red zone, you're at risk of both at the same time, which is definitely a place that we try to avoid, <laughs> if at all possible. Um, so you can see that the stock that I pulled up, uh, Pacific Ocean Perch falls right here. Uh, you can highlight over the point to get the more specific information, but we can see that in the last assessment, this stock was about twice the BMSY uh, and about and at a very low level of F over FMSY. Now, there are a number of things that we can do with this figure. Uh, for example, we can take a better look or a broader look across all of NOAA. So if I clear this, select all the stocks and draw the data, we can take a look at the most recent information from each stock assessment for all federally managed stocks. Uh, and this can give you a sense for kind of how NOAA is doing as an agency and how the stocks we're managing are doing as a whole. Uh, and as you can see from this figure, most of the stocks that we're managing are falling up here in the green zone, which is good news for us. Uh, you can highlight or you can hover over any of these points to get more information on a particular stock. Uh, but again, I want to highlight that most stocks are up in here. You see some stocks are kind of in this at risk of overfished zone, but they're not too far into that zone. And really, there's a minimal number of stocks that are in the risk of overfishing category uh, and in this red category up here. Uh, and, you know, this kind of figure can really kind of give a sense for how we're doing as an agency across all of our regions. Uh, and you could certainly filter this down uh, based upon region using the filters above here. One additional thing that we can do with this figure, I'm gonna go back to Pacific Ocean Perch. And one of the additional charts that 
uh, features that we've got here is that you can select a range of assessments uh, for a single stock. So we can look at all of the assessments between 2005 and 2019 for this stock. And what we get down here is kind of a, a time series of condition for this stock. And this can really be helpful with when you're trying to tell the story of how management is responding to specific conditions for a stock. So Pacific Ocean Perch uh, in 2005 was here. Uh, so it was at risk of being overfished. Uh, you can see, but the, oh, the fishing level was pretty low. Uh, over the next several years, you see kind of some slight improvement as we move towards that 1.0 line. But in 2011, it kind of takes a dive into that risk at overfishing realm. Uh, and in fact, the stack the stock was declared overfished in 2011, which kicked it into a rebuilding plan. And a nice positive story that you can really get out of this website is you can look at 2017, uh, when the stock was declared rebuilt at kind of the product of that rebuilding plan. You can see kind of the impact that had on the condition of the stock as it moves into the green zone and you know gets into the territory that we're really striving for when managing these stocks. And you can do this for any stock, uh, for which these data are available using StockSmart. So the next and the last of kind of the analysis or kind of high level summary modules I've got is the count assessments module. And what this does is really provide high level summaries of the activities of NOAA fisheries. Uh, you can sort this according to region if you want to, but I'm gonna just take the national perspective for now just to keep things simple and quick. Uh, and so what this figure does is count the number of stock assessments performed by NOAA fisheries annually. I know Abby alluded to about 200 uh, at the start of the talk. Um, and you can see that we've been around the 190 on average for about the past nine years. So we're pretty close to 200. Uh, we're definitely on an uptick overall over time, uh, which you know, just gives a sense. And this is something we regularly get asked for just to give a sense for how much, how many stock assessments we're doing uh, each year. Uh, so this, uh, I apologize, I didn't mention this at first, but this uh, module is sorted into three tabs, each one kind of answering a different type of question. Uh, this one gives us its assessment totals. The second gives us uh, a bit more information on the types of stock assessments we're doing. And when I say types here, I'm talking about kind of the extent of the analysis. Uh, so uh, a quick note, in 2018, we came out with a new update of our stock assessment improvement plan. And to be in line with that plan, uh, we kind of changed the way we were categorizing our activities. And so you'll see a difference on this website due to that change. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, more or less, a lot of the information we're looking at is pretty well preserved across years. So uh, in stock assessments, there are different levels of effort. Uh, research and operational assessments, as we consider them today, or benchmark and new assessments in the past are kind of our most uh, extensive analyses and you know they are scrutinized at the highest levels they undergo thorough reviews and are substantial efforts uh, by our staff uh, the operational or the full updates are kind of our bread and butter standard assessment package that we use uh, and that is certainly the most common thing uh, and then the stock monitoring update and partial updates are kind of our kind of quick and dirty updates in between more extensive efforts that we're doing uh, and so when I come down here to just kind of take a look at that distribution, you can see these darker colors at the bottom are the benchmarks, are the more extensive analyses that we're doing. We're doing somewhere between 20 and 30 each year. You can see that really the core of our activities in terms of stock assessments falls into this full update uh, or operational realm. And that's really kind of the major takeaway here. And we have kind of uh, a number of these more partial kind of intermediate analyses going on as well. So the last tab uh, summarizes the data and the models that are used when assessing stocks. Uh, and I'm not gonna get into too much detail here, but I think the general gist of most of these figures is that as you move up in level, you're kind of getting to increasing complexity, whether it's with the models or with the data. Uh, and so the assessment models just gives you a sense for how complex the model is and sorts things into different categories based upon the analyses that they use. Uh, catch data kind of just gives a sense for uh, the uh, the amount of detail we have on the catch coming in from one or more sectors and incorporating that into the assessment. Uh, the abundance data categories give a sense for uh, our state of knowledge with respect to where 
fish are and how many of them there are in those places uh, when we're doing our surveys and other types of uh, indexing activity. Uh, life history data gives us a sense for how well we understand the particular stock's growth, reproduction, or death rates. Um, composition data and ecosystem data you'll see at the bottom. These are grayed out prior to 2019 because we were not collecting this information before then. And so you'll only see it kind of going forward from here. Uh, but the composition data gives us a sense for how well we understand the makeup of a particular stock, uh, you know, how many fish of each age class are in there. And then the ecosystem information captures uh, the extent to which we are incorporating ecosystem considerations, be it temperature or, or kind of uh, uh, ecosystem level competition and interspecies interactions, like how much of that are we incorporating into any particular assessment? That's what we're capturing here. Uh, and so again, I'm not going to go into any greater detail than that, but all of this information is available here and you can look at that at the national level as well as at uh, the level of a particular region. Uh, so the last module that we have here is our download data module. It's certainly not the most flashy of the modules that we've got, but it's arguably the most powerful uh, because through this you can download both the most recent information uh, uh, as well as historical records for any of the information stored in this website. Uh, and so if you think about what we just looked through with the browse by stock, the chart time series, the plot stock condition, and the count assessments, you can get to all of that data here. And you can do it you know, with, with a couple of clicks of the button. Uh, the real power of that, or the power of this, is that you can kind of filter down. And so you can use these filters at the bottom to select which data you're extracting. So you can focus in on particular information that you're after. Um, and this is also pretty important for our partners because there are certainly some agencies that we partner with or uh, international organizations who regularly ping us for this information. Uh, and using this download function, they'll be able to ensure that they always have the most recent information available for all of our stocks. And so we can better assure that when we're putting stock assessment results out there, that they're going to be up to date and that it's easy for people who are displaying that information to update that and you know, to make sure that we're not having different information showing up on different sites or in different archives. Uh, and so there are some additional resources that we've linked in this last tab here. Um, a lot of this just kind of links to other relevant information, other relevant tools that are out on the web. Uh, one thing I will note is if you go to our stock assessment website, if you're curious about more of the information about what goes into stock assessments and uh, how all those data are combined to produce the estimates you see in StockSmart, the stock assessment 101 series here is a great place to start. Um, so just to quickly wrap up before I pass things off to, to Kristen, uh, this page is definitely a tool that will help us to be more transparent and hopefully more responsive to stakeholders. It'll help us to preserve staff time and just make this overall transit or overall process of getting this information out more efficient. Uh, and StockSmart, now that it's gone live, uh, certainly represents one of the biggest archives of stock assessment information available in the world. Uh, and we're very proud of that fact. And we very much thank uh, everybody who's put time into this as well as all of the regional contacts who have helped us to build this data set. Uh, however, again, we're not done. Uh, there's certainly more work to be done and we wanna keep this thing as up to date as possible. And so I will turn things over to Kristen so that she can talk about kind of where we're headed next uh, with this site. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, that was a great demo. And before I talk about the next steps for StockSmart, I'd like to give credit to our very talented developer, Wei Chu, in the Office of Science and Technology, who really brought all of our ideas to life for StockSmart. Um, we're really looking forward to continuing to work collaboratively with Chu to add new features to this great web tool. For our next phase of development planned for the coming year includes adding information about stock status and related management details. Um, so that includes status determinations. Um, is a stock overfished or have population abundance that's too low? And is a stock experiencing overfishing or have a rate of fishing that's too high? So 
what we have so far is kind of the science information. And then the next step is to add how that science information is being applied to fisheries management. Uh, so some other information that is included in that uh, would be status determination criteria or the fisheries management regulations that explain how to judge when a stock is overfished or experiencing overfishing. Um, and other management information related to status, status, such as the management actions that are required related to status, as well as um, progress trends and status for stocks and rebuilding plans, and scores and scoring components for the Fish Stock Sustainability Index, or FSSI, which is a measure of the performance of U.S. fisheries developed um, by tracking the most important commercial and recreational fish stocks and providing quarterly snapshots based on stock status. So that's kind of um, our phase two, which we're starting to work on now and we'll be working on over the next year. Uh, phase three, which we're not quite sure on the timing, but that is going to explore adding information that we currently track in SIS um, on survey supporting fish stock assessments, so developing charts, counts, and visualizations related to those surveys. Um, and then even beyond that, uh, development under consideration for later phases would be annual catch limits and additional data as we continue to expand the species information system. Uh, ongoing development while we kind of move through these additional phases would be addressing user requests and en enhancing user experience and exploring opportunities to improve data visualizations for the existing data sets that are already in StockSmart. So that's really all that we have for you today. Um, the link for StockSmart is at the top of the display again. Uh, general questions can be sent to stocksmart at noaa.gov. If you have any specific questions about today's presentation that we don't get to um, during the webinar, you can feel free to contact any of us. Our emails are on the slide there. And then um, once again, our website uh, for the Stock Assessment Program, which includes that great Stock Assessment 101 that Jeff referred to, is at the bottom of the screen. Um, so with that, Lisa, I think we're ready to take any questions that people might have. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation, everybody. Um, your presentation has generated some questions. So before I read them out loud, um, I just want to remind the audience to please continue to send us our questions. Um, our, respond, our presenters are going to be able to answer any, everything until 4 p.m. today, Easter time. Um, and any questions that don't get addressed uh, will be sent to them and they can address them offline. So with that, let me start with the first question. Um, it says, when you say results are parroted back, do you mean all figures are already rendered and stored behind scenes or are there functions that create plots from data, datables? We're using functions that create the plots in the tool um, from the data that's stored in the species information system. So our, the data is provided by staff at the science centers into SIS, and then we have a linkage from SIS to StockSmart for the data, and then all of the visualizations are created on the fly for whatever parameters people might set, which is how we're able to create these really cool comparison figures for whatever people might dream up. Um, so that's really the power of this web tool that we've created is you can go in and you can create any figure that that you might be interested in because you were creating them on the fly. Excellent. All right. Um, the next question is a two part question. I think it says curious about timing of updating assessment info. For instance, on Atlantic Bluefin Tuna 2017, there are more recent assessments, albeit update types of assessments for 2018 and 19. So the question is, are only full assessments included? Jeff, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so 
one of the components that we've built into the species information system is a quality assurance and control process. Uh, and so generally speaking, we try to get the assessment results into our system um, within two weeks of the acceptance or rejection of an assessment by the SSC. Uh, and sometimes we have a little bit of challenges with respect to timing that can come up. Uh, but I think actually for the bluefin tuna record, it's even a little bit more complex in that the records for the bluefin tuna, uh, the one stock that you mentioned, are a little bit challenging because they don't quite fit into the uh, architecture of our system. I think that assessment specifically uses multiple models and multiple model runs to generate its advice. And we are not quite configured to, to report that information into StockSmart. It's something that we're actively working on trying to get solved, but uh, that one is a bit of an outlier for us. And so I apologize that the data are out of date uh, there. So next question, um, how soon after a stock assessment is released will data be available in StockSmart? Um, I guess that kind of comes down to, again, uh, generally we try to aim for two weeks. Uh, things can get uh, a little bit more complicated sometimes based upon council processes and how quick we're able to get the results uh, and how busy the assessment authors are. But our target is generally speaking two weeks um, for most assessments. Another question asks, um, I may have missed this, but if we don't see all of the stocks that an ass assessment has done for, what does that mean? Why are they not included? Maybe uh, they don't have a stock assessment from the most recent year? Um, I'll take a stab at that. I think the best way to answer that might be if you're looking for a particular stock or a species and you can't find it, some of the species that we manage are kind of built into complexes. And so what may be happening is you may be looking at a stock that's a member of a complex uh, and you may not be able to kind of see that specific stock. And so the name might just be a little bit different in that way. I don't know, Kristen, if you know, will the complex kind of come up if you search for a complex member in our search function? No, it wouldn't. Um, but if, if the complex member has been assessed, I believe that would come up um it if it's a very recent assessment it might not be coming up um because the the assessment record itself is still caught in the data clearance process um so it if people are using the system and seeing data missing that they think should be there um jeff would be the best person to contact about that, he is our data manager for um, assessments in the species information system. And so if you're using it and think that there's information there or not there that should be there, um, definitely let us know. We do our best to keep it up to date, but sometimes if something is, is not there and we don't know that it's not there, then we can't track it down because we don't know what's missing. Um, so definitely let us know, please. Yeah, and just to chime in, I think I might have missed the initial question specifics, but it does depend a little bit on the module. So, I mean, I think the, the main one, if it's browsed by stock and you're not seeing it, then yeah, the, it's either not assessed or there might be some kind of issue with that. Otherwise, sometimes we have an assessment, but if it doesn't have the detailed level data, it may not show up, for example, on like plot stock condition or some of the graphs might not show up on time series. So at that point, it depends on which data is available within that assessment specifically. Great point, Abby. Great. Well, now we have both uh, a compliment and a question. And it says, first, congratulations for such a useful tool. Looking forward to using it in my research. How long did it take s and from start to finish? Will S&T also build a similar tool for marine mammal stocks? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for buttering us up. These are our favorite <laughs> kind of questions. Um, so we, we probably spent about two years total from the scoping phase to launch. Um, we had Sarah Schaffler from the Southwest Fishery Science Center 
um, was working with science and technology on a detail and she did the initial scoping phase. Um, and then she went back to her regular day job and it kind of went back on the shelf for about six months. Um, and then we kind of cleared out some other priorities and um, picked it back up and, and started working on it in earnest. Um, and so then the, the time working on it in earnest was probably more realistically about um, 12 to 14 months um and a lot of that progress as i mentioned was due to um our our wonderful developer um in st6 who who really saw this through from our idea stage to the actual implementation um and yes i didn't put it on the next steps slide um, but there is a um, protected resources species information system. And um, my idea, my, my big picture vision for this is that um, StockSmart really becomes kind of the home for um, not only fish but also pr information and and we should be able to create linkages and create similar tools that link to pr sys um, for marine mammals for esa listed stocks um, so you know as jeff mentioned it's very modular so we can build custom built custom purposed tools that are would be specifically for PR and might look a little bit different but do similar kind of visualization charting comparison type things so I I see it eventually going in that direction and kind of putting everything in the same spot kind of a one-stop shop for for the science information that we develop as an agency great um the next question asks, what computer language program was used to build StockSmart? To clarify, I assume this is not off the shelf or maybe it is and upgraded. Just curious. Uh, so it, Chu would be the best person to answer this question. Um, it's, it's all done with JavaScripting and I believe he used a variety of different libraries to to create these tools and um it it's very much customized um as i said he is very talented and did amazing work on this um so it's it's very much pieced together um to to do all of the things that we dreamt up yeah i have a i have choose email here uh because somebody asked this question of us recently, and uh, it's built from uh, a couple JavaScript libraries uh, that we used kind of together to to um, to build the responsive user face. Uh, I guess it's including the Bootstrap, jQuery, and a couple others. Uh, so it's not like one library specifically, but it's multiples. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, the next question: What are your plans to include the uncertainty associated with the estimates reported? That is a great question. We actually, um, we have another detailee to the Office of Science and Technology working with us right now. Um, Kyle Detloff from the Southeast Center is working uh, um, with us on detail right now, scoping that project out. Um, it's not a simple answer. Um, there are a lot of different ways that we could approach it and it kind of varies by region. Um, so he is in the process of interviewing staff at each of the science centers and talking to some council staff and um, exploring opportunities to uh, record uncertainty information and then translate that into um, visual displays. So if there are any people from science centers on the line that might have um, thoughts on this, I would encourage you to contact Kyle and provide your thoughts because we are actively working on this right now. Great. Um, another question. Will you report out the number of access from the public and how the information may be used? 
for example, publications or websites, perhaps surveys of how the tool is being used? So that's not something that we've um, thought about, but that is a good idea. I'm sure we could at least get some Google Analytics on um, site visits and things like that. Um, and we could also track citations. Um, I, I don't know beyond that um, how we could track it, um, but if there's any other thoughts on that, I'd be happy to hear them. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't know. We have a lot of that capability right now to track other than, you know, visitors and, and things to the site. Uh, so unless people reach out to us and show us cool products they use after the fact, we we may not have a lot of in, of way of figuring that out. I know Jeff, while our site has been down earlier this year, had kind of kept track of people who reached out directly for data and we had a pretty wide uh, user group there. So another another compliment and a question it says, great tool. Many scientists in our group would be interested in downloading data time series for many stocks, maybe 50 plus. Is there a way to do this without having to search for each species? Also, can you search by species uh, itis? Um, so uh, using the data download tool um, in StockSmart, that was the last one that Jeff covered you can download many stocks at once. Um, and so uh, if you have any questions on how to do that, feel free to reach out directly to uh, me, I'm, I'm Kristen, and I would be happy to walk you through that. But um, basically there, there is a way, and I believe we put a help hint in, um, you can download information for all stocks or all stocks within a region or from a management council or a science center. Um, so there is a way to do that and it's um, fairly straightforward. Um, you cannot uh, search by ITIS number um, if there is significant demand for that. We could add that into StockSmart. We do, in, we do have that information in SIS. So it would not be a difficult thing to add to StockSmart. It just didn't seem when we were um, building it, like there would be significant public demand for that. But if that if there's a need, um, let me know and we can discuss it. Excellent. Um, another question, I always like questions about uh, educational materials. Are there any educational materials available or in development for using the site? Uh, no, we actually, we specifically didn't develop a user guide as Jeff mentioned, and that was by design. We wanted the, um, we spent a lot of time and effort um, in the site design uh, to make it straightforward and intuitive and user-friendly so it didn't require um, any kind of user documentation like that. Um, so within the additional resources tab, there is a um, data dictionary document that you can download that gives um, definitions for every field um, that we use um, in, in like the download reports. Um, which would be useful for researchers that are kind of using our data. But beyond that, um, there's no additional documentation. Um, we're always available to provide help or answer questions. Um, but we're, we're hoping that we've done our jobs well enough that there aren't a lot of questions. I also just wanted to add in that actually this uh, library seminar was probably one of our early and main uh, educational resources. So we we definitely plan on, I know you guys archive the videos for these, but we'll plan on also having that video up on the site as well. So as future users come, they could rewatch the demo and stuff like that. Yes, we'll have that up um, within 24 hours actually. So uh, it'll be available soon. Um, next question, 
Well, assessments performed in conjunction with other jurisdictions, such as the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, be added? So at this point, um, we in the species information system, we only track stocks that are under federal management. So stocks um, that are managed by um, Atlantic States, we don't track. Um, that's kind of something that we've gone back and forth on over the years. And at this point, um, I don't think we have any plans to add those back into our tracking. Um, that could always change, but right now we don't have, we don't track those assessments. So I would say the Atlantic States website is the best resource for information on those managed species. Okay. Um, so another compliment. This seems like a great product. Is this part of the NOAA web transition? And do you have a present, uh, preference about the way we release this information either through our websites or StockSmart? Um, so for the first part of the question, the timing is actually coincidental with the web transition. Um, we were, we, you know, we've been working on it for a while and we were excited to get it out as soon as it was ready. Um, Abby, maybe you can address the second part of the question. Uh, to be honest, I, I wasn't entirely sure. Yes, I mean, I think, that, yeah, as Kristen said, this is something we've been working on for a while to produce. It, it does happen to overlap. We we have some ideas for how some of this data could also directly link into some of uh, the main pages of, of NOAA Fisheries, but I don't, in terms of where the information is, uh, you know, this is a good centralized national database. Uh, regional sites may, would also have similar stock assessment info in a lot of cases as well. So I don't think there's like a, preferred place that things need to get published first. We, I mean, we would have it and they would end up having it as well. Yeah, and if, if people have more specific questions that they would like to discuss with us about that, there, we'd be happy to have further discussions offline. We are getting close to the end of the hour, so I'm just gonna, um, we do have more questions, but I'm going to give you one last question to answer, and then we'll end the seminar. Um, this last question at, says, I've noticed that both Gulf and Atlantic Menhaden are not included. Is that because it is not federally managed? Exactly. That's correct. Okay. Well, I, I really thank you for all these fantastic questions, and clearly uh, this presentation has generated much interest. So thank you, uh, Jeff, Abby, and Kristen for your presentation today. Um, and those questions that were not addressed today, they will be sent to Jeff and Abby and Kristen to be answered offline. Um, again, uh, thank you for joining us today um, at the library seminar. And we are recording this. So by tomorrow, the uh, video will be on both, both the NOAA Central Library YouTube channel, as well as the Library Seminars website. So please feel free to pass it along to your colleagues and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.